Today I'm going to show you how to wire up a three wire GM alternator a couple different ways depending on your application. So let's take a look. This is the setup I have. I've got a two horsepower motor. It's actually for my bandsaw set up uh, and a three wire GM alternator 63 amp model. And this is a long tractor riding mower battery. Um, this meter back here is hooked up to the alternator output. The output stud is right there. This short wire right here that goes to terminal number two. You can see that you've got a, uh, a one and a two stamped into the casting. Pin number two is the remote voltage sensing wire. And pin number one is actually the uh, exciter wire that you need from the ignition. So from your keyed ignition. I don't have this set up keyed. I just have it hooked up to the battery but I am running a uh, indicator light, <clears throat> which when the key is on and the alternator is not working, the light's on. And when you, when the alternator comes on, the light will actually go off because you've got 12 volts supplied from the battery. Right now it's going to ground because the alternator's off. And once you energize that circuit, you'll have 12 volts on both sides of the battery and therefore there'll be no current flow through it and the light will go out. I also have this voltmeter set up on the battery and we'll see a little bit of a difference in voltage between the two when the alternator's running versus not. So let's go ahead and kick it on and see what it does. Now I'm going to change the remote sense wire. So this one, I'm going to move it over to where it's tied into the battery and we'll see what it does with that change. Okay, I've changed the remote sense wire. Instead of jumpering it directly to the alternator output, I've got it connected all the way over to the battery. And so we should see a higher output voltage from the alternator. And what we saw in the previous one was 14.8 volts on the output, 14.82, somewhere in there, on the output of the alternator. And we should see that voltage at the battery and slightly higher over at the alternator output now because it's regulating off of the battery voltage instead of off of the output voltage in this setup. So if you're using one of these alternators as a retrofit on an old tractor or something, converting it to 12 volt or just updating a generator, tractors don't have a very high electrical load and you're perfectly fine taking the terminal number two and jumpering it directly to your uh, alternator output post. If however, you're running it on a car or vehicle that's got a much higher electrical load, headlights, radio, all sorts of other things, you really should put your remote 
sense wire over at the main junction block where everything comes off. That way it will compensate for any sort of voltage drop in the system due to high amp draw and or uh, internal resistance in the wiring and regulate your battery charging voltage better than just regulating the output voltage on the alternator. So that's pretty much the basics on it. If if you are using one of these on a diesel tractor and you want an alternator on it to run auxiliary stuff, you need a diode set up on your ignition wire so that you don't end up back feeding the ignition from the alternator output. Um, and we're gonna try one more thing. We're gonna kick it on and then I'm going to disconnect the exciter voltage and see if it stays working or not. So you really only need momentary power to start the alternator charging to excite the field windings. After that, you don't need that power um, going into it. It generates its own 12 volts, which is why the uh, indicator light goes off. If, however, you don't have that exciter voltage and you turn this on, it won't output any power. And we'll take a look at that and watch this. So it just needs a little bit of power to start charging and it, as long as the engine's running at speed, it'll maintain the output of the alternator to charge your battery and run your electrical systems.